Welcome back. Let's talk about intercepting network traffic. To intercept network traffic, we have a few requirements for this training. First of all, we need a tool which can be used as a proxy to intercept network traffic. The go-to tool for pen testers to do this is Burp Suite. So Burp Suite is a proxy, as you can see in the picture, or a tool which can be a proxy between your host system, the attacker system, and the application server. So if you use an application, then that application might have HTTP requests over the internet or maybe over the local network to a different server. And with a tool like Burp Suite, you can intercept and temper those requests. Next, you need a mobile device, which we explained earlier so you can use the integrated virtual devices integrated in this training or you can create your local android virtual device or use a virtual device and we need a tool mainly to push configuration files to the device which is adb we also covered earlier and then there are some manuals how to configure burp suite specifically for an android device we will refer to those in the workbooks then let's dive into burp suite so with burp suite you can intercept network traffic that's one of the functionalities and there is a community edition which is free and we will use in this training and one of the most important settings in burp suite is the proxy listener so you can configure that burps listens as a proxy on a specific ip address of your host or on all interfaces and you can specify which port so by default it's port 8080 so let's dive into the practical part how do you use burp suite burp suite is available on portsfigure.net so portsfigure is the company who developed burp and also provide some free trainings about API pen testing and of course about the usage of Burp and there are different editions of Burp but for this training we're using the free community edition there's also a professional edition as you can see here but the free edition covers everything we need so the main functionalities are the first point it is an HTTP or WebSocket proxy and it also provides a history of all the HTTP requests for example and it has a few essential tools it's, it's called here as a repeater decoder sequence sir and comparer and i will also shortly go over those and the pro version has a little bit less limitations and of course some additional features you can just download the burp community edition burp is java based so you can you download the executable yar file or you can download the installer for all the type of operating systems so in my case i already installed the linux arm 64 version which matches my host system this was the result of the installation there's an executable YAV file, a Java runtime environment, and also an integrated browser, which is based on Chromium. So let's start Burp. If you start Burp, you can just click Next to create a temporary project. Also use the Burp defaults. Then this is how Burp looks like. So it opens in the dashboard, where you can get an overview of the captured traffic and the numbers, for example. But the most important part is the proxy. And then we have the proxy settings. And here you can see the proxy listener. So by default, it's only listening on local host. So that means if a different machine in my network or over the internet, if I'm exposed over the internet, is trying to reach my IP address over port 8080, it will fail. But if I would change this to all interfaces, then I'm exposing it over the network. And I can also pick a specific IP address, for example, within my local network. Or if you connect it with a VPN, there might be a different IP address. So let's pick all interfaces for now. This might be a little bit unsafe, of course. And then this built-in browser is quite new, maybe since a year in Burp. So this one is pretty easy if you're testing web applications. You can just open this built-in browser. As you might notice, this already gives you some message about an invalid certificate, but this is used to intercept the network traffic. And in this built-in browser, of course, it is trusted and it is working out of the box. So that's very nice. And in the HTTP history, you can the see the result of this google.com, which already results in a lot of requests by default. The latest one is at the bottom and the oldest one is at the top. I prefer to do it the other way around. So the latest one is at the top. Then we can quickly go over a few functions of Burp. As you can see, this HTTP history is useful to verify all the requests. So this simple google.com URL already results in 33 HTTP requests. And you can see for each request, the request and the response. 
And if you do a right click on the request, then you have different options like send to intruder, send to repeater, send to sequencer, etc. But I will not give you a training about how to use Burp Suite. On YouTube, there is a lot of information available, also from Ports Figure about how to use Burp Suite. But to tell you about one of those functionalities, there is a repeater. So if I send a request to the repeater, the name already says it, then I can repeat this request and get the response. And also, I can temper with this request. So for example, if I change the part and the URL, then you can see the response is different. In this case, 404. So this is very short how to use Burp Suite. And if I want to use it in a non-default browser like Firefox, then I manually need to configure the proxy. So localhost 8080. Okay. And now it gives me some warning about an unsafe certificate, which is the port trigger certificate. So usually what you need to do, you need to trust this certificate before you can intercept all the network traffic. Burp also has their own defaults to do this. So you can go to HTTP Burp and then you can download the CA certificate. And within Firefox, for example, you can install this certificate. Authorities, import, trusted for websites at least, should be fine, okay. And now this is a trusted certificate. And to prove to you this works, let's go back to the proxy history. And now we should be able to see all the requests of mobilehackinglab.com. So this is in short how you can use Burp for web applications. And also with any other application or even within a terminal, you can also specify a proxy, like for example, export HTTP and HTTPS proxy on Linux. And then I can do curl and then google.com. And then you should see this request is also reflected in Burp Suite. So this is in short how you can use Burp Suite. And in the next video, we will demonstrate how to configure it properly in combination with an Android device. So hope to see you in the next video.